Okay, I will read the public input statement. Um, the first public input session is a 20 minute, 21 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input station, st session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, for example, matters involving personnel, cannot be made during public input. Do we have any public input? Denise, can you hear her okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, right. public info? No public info. All right. We're going to go to the minutes of January 2nd, 6th. January 6th. Anybody see anything? Needs to be changed. Didn't come anything wrong with her. Wow. I didn't see anything either. Okay. Are we all set? Okay, the motion to pass. I make a motion to uh, accept the minutes. Is that you? Yeah. Second? I'll second. Okay, all those in favor approving the minutes of January 6th? Okay, about. Okay, student report is not here, so we'll follow up with the student. <coughs> the student's not here. Oh, uh, so we'll just follow up. Okay. Uh, okay, just to make sure that yeah. things are okay. Okay, we have a donation to the backpack program. Okay, we have a two thousand dollar donation from Army Service to the backpack program, and this is done. Uh, the employees that have some remaining vacation time can turn it in for for um, for a donation to go so that the two thousand is for the backpack program. And we have to vote. To you do need to vote because of the um, so five hundred. Yep. Yeah. So what does Omni Service do? Just because I'm curious. They yeah. have hose and accessories for big vehicles and companies. Yes. Right. So somebody who used to work in the district oh, has okay. a parent who works there and that's how that connection has remained. Well, well, we certainly, connection. Yes. <laughs> certainly thank that. Sir. Yes. Uh, somebody would like to make a motion. I make a motion uh, that we accept the donation for the backpack program. Uh, second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Financial summary for December, which I think we got emailed, right? I think you did. Oh, yeah, we did. Everybody have that? So, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We are still on uh, our trajectory. Mm -hmm. Nothing uh, has really thrown us here on, on the. Um, Disbursements and, and covered expenses. So we have 60% as you look down remaining. Are there any questions? So um, the food service contingency, why do we have so is that why do we have so much remaining in that? So the food service contingency is only used at year end when we determine whether or not they need it. We don't automatically send that over to okay. them. Okay. Thank you, Denise. It took me all that time to find it on the line. I know. <laughs> find your hands, Denise. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, thanks. Educational programming okay. is next. All right, so before we start just talking about attendance and some of the other things that we talk about typically during this session, AJ is here to kind of give us a little uh, thumbnail on how midterms have been going because it's, they are occurring this week. And we have kind of a proposal uh, to ask. 
task and just run through. So, AJ. Yes. So I would say, overall, things are going very, very well. Um, students are doing a good job. I mean, and for those folks that don't know, so our you know finals or midterm, so we assign credit, half a credit students earn at the midway point in a course, and then they'll earn the other half of the, the second half. So the, the you know midterms or finals when the courses um, are at this point in the year, it's, it's an opportunity really for students to show what they know um, because we um, work really hard at having students meet the standards and demonstrate what they know. And so it's, it's not an opportunity where if a student has demonstrated they've met the standard, the final can't sink them. So I think it's an age appropriate way to have a high stakes opportunity, if this makes sense. So yes, it's a big deal. If you haven't met a standard, this is kind of your last opportunity to, to demonstrate that yes, I can do that. But, it, and it certainly can affect your grade. So, you know, if, if you have an A in a class and you really come in and, and are unable to demonstrate, your grade will drop, but it's not gonna drop you below that sort of passing threshold. If you've demonstrated throughout the semester that you can do a standard, you've demonstrated, you can do it. You've had multiple opportunities and you've shown that. Um, but one thing we are seeing, and I think probably a direct result of COVID and absences is a number of students that are absent. Um, and it's been tricky, yet, you know, we're really trying to work with students that if you're ill, stay home. So I would say this week we've had the most number of students who have sort of tested positive here because they're trying to come to school there, you know, but then Ms. Creighton and, and her staff is doing an amazing job. Students are testing. If they test positive, they're being picked up. We're going through all those processes. but. We are finding ourselves, so we're, you know, today we just passed the midway point of the four day week. We had through the first two days, um, 110 to 120 students who had missed one of the two days, the first two days of finals. So that accounted for roughly speaking, probably somewhere between 225 and 250 Final, you know, final exams are obviously not all exams, but you know, final experiences that they've missed. So our wheels are turning. That you know, in a you know, in a typical year, typical situation during finals week, we probably have attendance that approaches 97, 98 percent for that week because you know, families, you know, typically speaking, aren't scheduling sort of trips. There aren't opportunities where kids are out of the building, so our attendance is really high. We're you know, way lower than that now. So really trying to think about how do we allow students to finish the semester successfully, you know, knowing, and I just did a really quick count, we had um, over 40 students today that are marked in our attendance as remote with permission, which means there's some sort of quarantine, you know, working through that process of getting back into the building within the five days. So one of the things we thought a lot about it is, and we want to be really careful because senior, uh, our seniors posting the grades to colleges are really important. And so the, the tricky spot is until students get these made up and have a chance to do them, oftentimes their grade will be incomplete, uh, which is fine, you know, relatively speaking, if a student, you know, in the past would have missed a day. Generally, if you are ill, you'd miss a day, you miss Tuesday, you'd probably feel better by Wednesday, you're in, you know, but now when you're out, oftentimes you're out for the five day quarantine period. So we really thought about what can we do to help support students, get them across this first semester finish line without creating a ton more stress and chaos in their lives. And one of the things we thought about was having, um, you know, next Wednesday as a day that could be used as a makeup day for students only in grades 9 through 12. Um, so that's a day they could come in use to make up finals. We're anticipating that in grades 9 through 12, again, I'm using that, you know, 110 to 120 as of yesterday. Roughly speaking, we double it. So 200 to 250 grade 9 through 12 students would come in on Wednesday. To, to, and again, we won't finish all of their finals. It's not fair to expect a student to take four or five, six finals in one day. But I think what we'd be able to do is get it to a point where it's like it has been normally, if that makes sense. Like we can, a student could reasonably take maybe three of their finals. So if they happen to miss three days due to quarantine, they missed five of six finals or four of six finals, they could get that now down to, okay, I have to take one 
over the course of the next couple of weeks during the nighttime advisory block or during after school, I can make one up. That's manageable. If I have an incomplete, that's fine. What we want to be careful of is they're not, you know, we don't have 50 seniors that we're sending off, you know, or not sending off a transcript because it has four incompletes on it. It's not really helpful to their cause in college. So, you know, our kind of plan and thought is there is absolutely no reason why our eighth grade students can't all attend. Eighth graders don't take finals in our building, so eighth graders could run a regular Wednesday schedule. I also think we would, you know, certainly have all of our students that have any sort of extenuating circumstances. So if it's students in our um, exceptional studies programs, for example, no problem. Those teachers are not tied up. It would be, you know, sort of generally those grade nine to 12 teachers really working to get those students across the finish line. And then, you know, we tossed around things like, well, it makes more sense to do it on a Monday. Why do we wait till Wednesday? But the problem with Monday is anyone that tested positive after Tuesday is still in quarantine on Monday. <laughs> so the only group by Wednesday that wouldn't be out of quarantine is if someone happens to test positive tomorrow. And again, they miss a day of finals. Like people in the past have missed a day of finals. I don't want to make it sound you know, like that's obviously a thing. But we're really worried about those kiddos that miss three and four days of finals and trying to, it's just going to be really stressful. We worry if we don't try and do something. So so the kids that are remote, you're out, they have to come to the building to take finals. Is that what you're? The kids that are remote, oftentimes they do, yeah. Oftentimes they do. So there isn't an option for them to do stuff? No, in a lot of cases there's not. Sometimes, sometimes there are. There are, or parts of the final. I know, for example, a history teacher sent out, hey, you guys can watch the video that's going to lead into this, and you can write the essay, and then you'll do the part. You know, So there's multiple parts. Parts they can do, but then parts need to happen in person. So you're, so you're saying that eighth grade would come normally, yep. and just the people, nine through twelfth graders that need to make up Yep. Yes, that would be our plan. The heart, and we, you know, again, we don't, we don't want to not have everyone here. So we kind of went through all the parts and pieces of what would be possible. Who could we, you know, could there be a remote? And there really can't even be a remote component because all of those grade nine through twelve teachers. I mean, I've got my list of art teachers and band and perform. You know, like there's all kinds of these performance pieces that people give. So really, truly, every everyone in grade nine through twelve would be you know, tied up, if you will, to get students through the finals. And it's normally a half day, so you'll be making it a full day? No, nope, it's, well, it's normally, it would still be the Wednesday schedule. So, early so students would come in at 9.40 um, until 3 o'clock, just like normal. Um, and we wouldn't, you know, and we haven't talked a lot about it with teachers, wanted to talk with you guys first, wanted to talk to Audra and Sue first. Um, but I think it, it would require, and I think folks will be fine with this, some flexibility because we won't run our typical, you know, 740 to 1025 is the first final. Like it'll be more almost triage, if you will, that if a student is able to finish, and again, sometimes finals don't take the full, you know, two and a half hours for all students, you know, and especially having less students in the building. It certainly won't take that long because sometimes it's a presentation or it's part. So I think students would be able to move through. Um, and I really think it would be reasonable for students to complete sort of three to four of those obligations in a day. So I would say a typical student of ours, you know, probably, and we, we certainly have students that take eight classes, absolutely. But I would say typical is more six to seven classes that they take. So I think if a student could clear four of those you know that that's a big weight off of okay i've got to i've got to take care of two more over the next couple of weeks i can do that i just think it's daunting to try and complete six of those experiences over the next couple of weeks and i just think it could be stressful so i have a couple of questions so I, I think i understand the way you're laying it out but just so that i'm clear yep. the um this is really only for 9 through 12th graders who have been out with quarantine over some period yeah. and missed their finals. Yeah, and I, I mean, quarantine or, and sorry to interrupt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or sickness, you know, we have a lot of students, you know, feeling really ill this morning, I kept them home, like that's kind of the code that, that gets typed in by the nurse. So not necessarily COVID, although 
we could find out tomorrow that right. like, so, if I get home, they're ill, is COVID, right. never know. So, so out sick, probably COVID, but for whatever sure. reason. Yep. And then the, um, so I'm sorry, did you say the rest of the students would not be coming in at all or you would be Correct. running with them? Okay. Would not, would not be coming in on that day. Okay, and then the eighth graders were also not coming in or- No, nope, they're coming. I, I, I would prefer them to come in. I think for them, the, the normal C of, you know, it's the third day of our second semester. I think it's important and they don't take finals. So there's no reason, there's no so, makeup. So do the kids, does this, ha this doesn't end up affecting, like we'd still, this doesn't end up affecting the day, like numbers no, or anything, because it's just a small, it's not enough kids that would be affected, right? Right, the percentage would be high enough throughout the district for it to count as a regular day, yep. Um, I mean, I think it sounds like a, a really creative approach and hope, hopefully you'll get not another batch of kids that, <laughs> that can't make it, but um, it sounds like you've done the math on the days and yeah. hopefully it'll yep. work. So, right. yeah. Yes, and again, hopefully anyone, and again, not that you want to think about it this way, so I hate to almost present it this way, but anyone that were to, again, also assuming that they're feeling better, that's obviously <laughs> Key. That's step one. But as far as quarantine were to go, anyone that happened to have tested positive Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday would be okay to be able to come back by Wednesday. Well, I will just say good luck um, pulling your schedule together for that day. <laughs> it will. Yes. I, I think one, one of the parts that will be to our advantage is, you know, so a few parts. The fact that we're teamed is helpful because I think our plan would be that, you know, again, it's a daunting number that we will probably by the end of the week have had, I'm gonna say 60 to 75 ninth graders, for example, that would have missed days over the course of these four days. But when you're able to break that down into, we have three ninth grade teams, and now you're saying there's gonna be 20 to 25 students and the four team teachers. All right, now it feels reasonable that we can put together a plan for 25 students to clear that hurdle. So I think that will, that will certainly work in our favor. Yep. Anybody else have any questions? Have any questions? This is something we have to vote on. I don't think you do. We just wanted to make sure that you are comfortable. Yes. yes. Yeah. I don't see a problem with that. So. Okay. Excellent. Sounds good. We all get to be here, get an extra day. So. Sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much. It's a job. Get the day off. Then we're excited. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Okay. okay, so some other um, items, just we typically run through attendance. So student attendance this week, we had a low in one building of 83, and uh, our, our high was 94% present. Um, and then staff, our low was 80%, and our high was 95. So we're definitely seeing um, impact to our staff. Uh, we've kind of talked through that in some of the updates that I've sent. Uh, to you. As the week has gone on, it has been better. You can see the decrease in staff out. Um, so that's that's really good. And uh, we do have the new uh, standard operating procedures, the three parts that we um, sent to you before. Um, mass, mass breaks outside, the um, fact that students and staff can come back after day five. So from six to ten they can come back but they need to be distanced for um, when they're eating. Um, Are we able to physically do that? We well, have enough space. It, we need school. space, and it is. it has been tough. Uh, like the high school uh, is implementing a little slowly just because they're in midterm, you know, they're taking right. their, their finals. Um, North Berwick, that's tight to start with, is having to be really creative. Um, but everybody's been really thoughtful about how they're going to um, handle that and how they're going to kind of keep track of the days that students, you know, if you're coming right. back on day six versus day 10, how does that look? So really working through some of those record keeping. Pieces. Because they have to also, when they come back, be masked for recess as yes. well. So yes. How do you know if the right. teacher oh, exactly. recess So we needed a little, little bit of time. time. We needed a little bit of time to figure that out. Um, so so we're we implementing that already. Not 100%, like I said, because the, like the high school here right. had a, um, a different schedule this week, so yes. 
uh, but by next Monday we should be in full um, compliance of that piece. Uh, asking? Well, the outside masking yes. as well as inside yes. masking, no mask breaks is a big thing right. inside. And oh, the contact tracing. Contact. Oh, contact yes. tracing. No contact. Right. Right. I bet you didn't do a dance about that. You lost <laughs> that. <laughs> we're still keeping, you know, we're still letting staff know if, like, if somebody was on a bus or yeah. just for, you know, for um, transparency purposes mm -hmm. for that. So everybody's aware. Um, we've had very good um, feedback from parents with that letter that went out explaining the um, three changes and how we were implementing and just felt that we were pretty thoughtful about all different parts to that, especially the part about students needing to possibly eat away from their peers. So, yeah. so those are our big updates for educational programming. Is that it? it? Yep, it is. Oh. All right, employment. We do have a new hire, and that's Nicole De Benedictus, and she is um, finishing. Well, she's finishing an internship here, and she's starting to teach. Um, if if this nomination goes through, she will be starting uh, next week. Next no, week. right before. Right next okay. week. Yeah. Um, so CC now. Yes, Common Core. Yep. Okay. Thank Common Core. Sorry. 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 Okay. <laughs> and she will have her bachelor's, well, she has her bachelor's in math, and she'll have her master's in May. So it's so been we, very nice that she's been here all right, the way through. Right. Nice. And yeah. That's a nice piece. So we do need to vote on that. You do. Yes. Somebody like to make a motion. All right, go, Miss Lovejoy. Hi, little. I second. Do we have a second? Yeah. Oh, you have two of them. I know they're on a roll. Uh, <laughs> I have only four people that can do it, so it's like, that's right. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Five. And then we have a recent resignation for Kalani Anderson Andre from Huzzy School, third grade. Um, and that will be effective in the next couple of weeks. So we do need to accept that resignation. Make a motion to accept Kalani's resignation. Switch it up a little bit. Wow. <laughs> second. I second. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I think we're going to way out. We're going to get to the <laughs> I was writing. I couldn't do it. Okay. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Okay. And then we have a retirement for June after school ends. And that is Lisa Corain, uh, who has been with us for 33 years. Wow. And uh, total for her career has 38 years mm -hmm. of teaching. Um, so she is currently first grade in North Burlington. So we do need to accept that retirement. With regret. With 33 regret. years here? 33 years. Yeah. Oh, 38. So, yeah. A second? Is that Ms. Lovejoy first on that yes. one? Okay. All those in favor? And we would certainly so yeah. like to congratulate yeah. 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 you. Yeah. 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 Tremendous impact to North Broadway. So we thank her for her services. Okay. Other. I think the other is just a couple reports out. We we both watched a little bit of the basketball game this afternoon. There was a staff a faculty um, student uh, basketball game. That Those was are all the best. It was hysterical. I have video. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put a little clip in because there was some pie throwing as well. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. really? it was, that was the first time they've done it there and they've had oh, it. was almost a full house. Yeah. It was a good turnout. It was nice. And then the middle school had a um, big chorus and band concert earlier. Yeah. This week, that will, both of those were well attended. Yeah. Last week, we had the, um, the concert here. Concert. Yeah. Yep. That was very well attended yeah. as well. And really well done. So, yeah, it was good. Yeah, so it's good. nice to see those activities. Yeah. Um, yeah. <coughs> so, those, any yeah. others for you? Sir? Anybody else have any others? Uh, okay. okay. Anybody like to make any more public input? <laughs> There's a chance. <laughs> Uh, and I guess we're ready to go into executive session. 
Yes. Somebody would like to make a motion for that whatever the number is down there. Motion the executive session MRSA 405-60. They were not trying discussions. That's it. Thank you. Ladies, thank you for coming tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, it will stop. Oh, we'll turn that. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me.